welcome back to part two of two words that stirred me up years ago and recently. Forgive the background noise as we're driving, but we have our eyes on the road. And uh, again, as I spoke to David, and I was preaching Christ to him, not with a loud voice, not like he would do in a pulpit, but just witnessing to him, sharing my personal faith in Jesus Christ with my lost Uncle David, who I admired very much then and now, who I had taught his sons in Sunday school, who are now grown men and have children of their own, and one is still, I hope, perhaps even listening to the sound of my voice, Jamie is still in need of the message I'm about to share. Now as I spoke to David, he began to weep. And as I alluded to in the previous recording, he had been in the church uh, building with no doubt some other men that he had been working with. And after they got off work, they found a building like that, some place indoors, and they got drunk in the church building. And he was grieved about it. He was convicted of that sin, and he thought, wrongfully so, that he had sinned in such a manner that he couldn't be forgiven. And as I explained, began to explain things to him, a car pulled in the driveway. I don't know who it was. It doesn't matter. But when company comes, you know, sometimes you have to use discretion, I thought, and maybe we'd continue the conversation later. And he looked at me, that bearded face, that curly long hair, looking like Grizzly Adams. If you never met Uncle David, then you can picture in your mind. If you knew Uncle David, that's exactly what he looked like. Big muscles and a full head of hair and a full beard. And he said two words to me as I was about to stop speaking to him at that moment about Jesus Christ. He's, as only he could, it was either two or three. He said, keep preaching through those tears. He, he, it, it was begging me to keep preaching, keep telling me how I can have my sins forgiven, he was saying. So I kept preaching. I, I didn't think I was preaching. I was just speaking to him about Christ. And I had an opportunity to speak at his funeral and to preach the same gospel to his brothers, to my sisters, to my dad, to my family, to uh, other members of the family, some uh, one of which uh, rode a motorcycle to the uh, funeral. Nothing simple about a motorcycle, of course. Long beard, one of the Allen boys, my aunt's brother. After, after I preached that same gospel to others at his funeral, a man very reminiscent, very, very similarly to David, came up to me and said something along these lines as I preached the gospel at that funeral, as I had mentioned this story about keeping, keep on preaching. No matter who shows up when you're telling the truth, keep preaching. That, that Allen boy walked up at young, he was one of the boys, much older than I am. He said, that was good. That was good. Well, praise the Lord. The gospel is good. Many, many years have went by since the death of David Thompson. And I sent, as I'm doing this uh, recording on my phone, hopefully a little better audio right now. The wind is up and it's hot today. No AC in this truck, but that's no big deal. I sent, a, I sent a little recording as I walk through the scriptures, like you see the Bible on my phone right now, and you, you see that verse. Peter is speaking, he's writing this letter. This is 2 Peter. This is once the failing preacher who denied the Lord, who cussed, who ran from God, who quit the ministry. Oh, it sounds familiar. I haven't quit the ministry. I have gotten away from God at times more often than I would care to uh, admit. 
and found everything else to do besides preaching. But that same gentleman, I recorded little recordings. I walked through the scriptures just verse by verse, just like we talked to David about the Bible, that all have sinned, David weeping, come short of the glory of God. And talking to him about how Jesus had died for his sins. Christ died for us. And David said, keep preaching. I sent a little recording like that to my friend, Brother Todd Bell up in Maine. Been up there over 20 some years. A gospel preacher in a hard place where it supposedly can't be done and God is doing it over and over and over again. He sent me back two words after I sent him a little recording like this. Every once in a while he'll say, well, glory or, or amen or he sent me two words. And I didn't even realize it until I began to record this little message for you. And those words stirred me up, just like Peter, who's writing here in 2 Peter chapter 1. And you look there in verse 13, Peter's saying, Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, Peter's saying, as long as I'm alive, I'm in this body. It's meat, it's good, it's profitable for you. As long as I'm here, as long as I'm living, I, my eyes are open and I have a voice. As long as I am in this tabernacle, Peter says, comma, here's what Peter wanted to do. And he did it by writing these words. He couldn't send a text, but he wrote a little letter. Peter says, to stir you up. I'm telling you, beloved, I spoke a little bit about this in Sunday school recently to some of the best people in the world about how God can use us with a couple few short words to stir people up. Peter says to stir you up by putting you... How, how, am I, how did Peter say he was going to stir these people up? And God thought so much of it, he put it in the Bible. So you and I can hear about it today. He said to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. God says through the Apostle Peter's pen, I'm going to stir you up by your memory. I'm going to remind you of something. And I'm telling you, as I sit here and record this, and my brother, Tom Bell, sent back two words to me, and it was, keep preaching. Just like David did. The same truth. Keep preaching. And you know what that did? As I'm sitting here recording this, it reminds me of looking at that lost man, my uncle's face, those tears coming down his eyes. If he were here with me right now, he's somewhere. I trust he did not die in his sin. That he repented of his sin and put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ as his Savior who died for his sin. He died for that drunken escapade in the church. He died for my wickedness that I lived for nearly 20 plus years. He died for your sin. He tasted death for you. God sentenced His own Son to death and executed the sentence upon His Son for you, His sinless, spotless, perfect Son. Got the death penalty that you and I both rightfully deserve, eternal death. In a place called the Lake of Fire, Christ tasted and accepted and drank fully the cup of God's wrath on the cross. And Peter says, as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, I remember. Do you remember the last time maybe you spoke to someone about the Lord and conviction by the Holy Ghost set in? And whether they believed or not, but you knew that God showed up and used you to point a sinner to the Savior. Maybe you remember when someone pointed you to Christ and you repented of your sin. You trusted Him. You called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you were saved. That'll stir If that doesn't stir you up, maybe you're not born again. That's a whole other problem right there, beloved. You must be born again. You must be saved. saved and you've went silent as dear brother Ian Paisley would say 
get your mouth open for God and preach. That doesn't necessarily have to be in the pulpit. It might be in a pig in a, in a field next to a pig pen. Somebody needs to hear the truth. If you've been called into the gospel ministry and you've ran from God, chased this world, as the hymn writer says, delusive dream, then repent, confess it as a sin that it is, and recognize and realize that the calling and gifts of God are without repentance. God ain't changed his mind about the calling put on your life or my life. That's what I'm doing today. Obeying God's call. I trust this short two-part series will stir you up as you remember when you once preached the truth. And if you're preaching the truth and you've not forsaken, you've not run from the call of God, don't stop now. Keep preaching. God bless you, beloved. Until next time.